Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, and this is take two because I was playing with the hair and I'm still doing that, but um, I'm going to try to not do it too much. <laughs> if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do so. Tonight's topic, as you can already see in the thumbnail, is black female mortality. Some of the issues that black women face that is common to us, and I'm going to get back into this in the comment section. This topic was hit... This topic hit me like a ton of bricks because somebody had commented on my being Mary Jane syndrome and I'm trying to link, I will try to link that person in this video about this topic and I didn't get on it right away because I wasn't sure if it was even a thing and then I finally sat down and when I sat down to read the data and to see some of the things that were being said, I was very, very shocked and disturbed by this topic. And I'm going to get into why that is in this video, and I'm going to try to touch on some of the issues that I discovered around this topic, but it is so multidimensional, multifaceted, that, of course, here we go again with another three-piece segment, because it's a lot of content, and I will try not to cover everything in one video, because each thing needs its own conversation. And so tonight's conversation is going to be specifically about health. And, and I can already see this being a huge issue in and outside of the context of what is considered healthcare. Now, I just want to give you, and so all of what I had done to prepare for this video was the reason why I didn't do a video yesterday, because I decided that this needed to be taken care of quickly and thoroughly. One, because I know people love to come for me and talk a whole lot of other stuff having not done their research. And two, it is so delicate to have this conversation and to talk about the elements involved in this conversation that it can easily be a topic that can lead to me being demonetized or even canceled. Oh, yes. Yes. This is how serious this conversation is. So let's just get a... Um, a glass of wine, get yourself a beer, or get yourself a cup of tea, but please sit down because the statistics don't make sense and don't add up to what it is that is at stake here, which is black female health. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is this partial opinion, partially statistics, is that female health in America is um, basically the worst in developing nations. Which is news to me because, I mean, there is so much technology available and and the technology is so advanced, more so in many cases than it is, like, for example, here in Germany. And yet, healthcare is very archaic in the systems that are involved. As um, and, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that not everybody gets the kind of care that they need because of insurance policies and hospital policies and I am going to leave that there because there are I don't like I said I don't want to be demonetized for having this conversation. So that's one element that we need to be taking into consideration when we consider why the healthcare system is failing. But my number one issue here with the healthcare system or health black female health period is the fact that Five out of four black women are considered obese, not overweight, not, you know, you could probably lose a stone, there'd be like five pounds or something, but obese. Now, obese means that you are 30 plus pounds over your required weight for your height. Now, I know there's a lot of discussion and debate taking place right now about bone um, bone density and how we, black women carry their weight in comparison to their white counterparts. And I just want to say to that 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 is something that has very valid, um, it has a very valid point in, it. Ha it's a very valid argument to be made, sorry, but it still is not um, a, a big difference of let's say 15 to 20 pounds. So if your white counterparts are supposed to be 120 pounds, if you're five foot five, like I am, 
then if you are a black woman, then your 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 body mass index or, or your weight at that age is not like um, an acceptable weight would not be something like 160 pounds. So um, if you do the math, there's oh, there is about six to 10 pounds difference. So 120 pounds or 130 pounds, which is workable and reasonable, in my opinion. Um, I'm five foot five. I weigh 100 in. 25 to 130 pounds, depending on what time of the year it is and what's in season, you know, but I'm a very active person and I keep a very, very rigid, not very rigid. I won't say rigid, but I work out uh, every other day and I walk every day and I try to walk as much as possible in my daily routine of doing things. So I consider myself a very sporty person. And I think that that's something that I've always done because it was always encouraged in my household. However, when I started doing sports, there were not a lot of people that looked like me doing sports unless they were men. Now, this goes back to my other conversation that I keep on having about um, black love and black coupling is that uh, women, for whatever reason, tell themselves that men love to have a little bit of meat on their bones. And I agree with that to a, to a degree where the weight has to be proportionate to your size and in the right places. So I don't understand what women are saying about outside of that context, because if you are obese, you, anybody can see that that is unhealthy and nobody wants to have a partner that a long-term partner that is unhealthy. So I could already hear people trying to come for me because of this conversation. But the second thing in regards to that particular notion about coming for me with, on this topic is that this is not my opinion. But women are so, black women are so invested in staying with that narrative that it is a layered issue of having an, a very bad attitude towards one's health. Not bad attitude. Yes, bad attitude. Or an attitude that is that doesn't favor um, health and equates health with BMI and weight. So um, this is one of the reasons that Black women are dying at a higher rate than their white counterparts. So this is important information for people to grasp and understand because when somebody is of a uh, certain weight class or weighs a certain amount, they are more prone to get high blood pressure, hypertension, obesity, salt consumption, and higher diagnosis in cancer. Now, these are not Nihanda statistics, okay? It's not Dr. Helmker coming to you with her own personal um, her own personal spin on women's weight. This is something that has actually been is actually a huge concern of the World Health Organization, even at that high level. And so what we have seen is that this has starting to creep in with the mortality rate, excuse me, the maternal mortality rate. Black women are, I think it's like 10, 10 times or five times, or well, they're way more likely to die in childbirth than their white counterparts in America. So much so that this has gotten so much attention in the past five, four years because it is a it is like a partial epidemic in America. And the reason for that I'm gonna be getting into our next video, but I also want to say, because I don't want it to be fat shaming or fat phobic, is that another reason why a lot of people, a lot of black women experience high blood pressure and hypertension and obesity is because food is used as comfort and we have higher stress levels or we experience way more stressful situations. A lot of them I talk about on this channel than our white counterparts. And one or two of my um, critics or detractors was trying to elude to some of those issues. However, um, I really was also surprised in terms of healthcare for Black women at the numbers and the attitude still to this day toward 
mental health care. 80% of women that have children go through baby blues, which has been confirmed as a mild form of depression. Extrapolate that, but or add to that the fact that 72% of Black women are raising their children alone. It is no wonder that the numbers speak in the way that they do to the issue. So, you know, some of us are talking about how Black women are women winning. I uh, cannot concur. And this is one of the reasons why. Now, I hope that you guys can stay tuned because I'm going to try to see if I can bring some midwives and doulas and people in the medical profession online this to have a more um, open discussion about this issue, particularly as it pertains to weight, because what I have found in some of the research that I've done and some of the people who are in this profession are talking about is giving women a pass on their health when it comes to the weight issue. I was very disturbed by this. This is disturbing. If you have a medical professional who you entrust your health to, they need to be able to speak clearly about what being overweight, sorry, obese, does to women who are pregnant or does to women, period. And I can understand why that's not being done. More. Well, actually, I do know why it's not being done. That I cannot discuss on YouTube. I think that you guys should follow the money and follow your, your do your own critical thinking skills to really find out why this issue is being portrayed as body positive and all of the other craziness that we hear being used as buzzwords in all communities at the moment. Um. This is a really big deal. This is a really, really big deal. And I'm going to get more into it in my next segment, so I hope you guys can stay tuned. And if you, sh if you can, please make sure to stay safe and stay free.